and yes we are live and we are back in session for the work the web uh, training program uh, and today we're going to cover a little bit more about uh, redux and and application state and last time around we uh, we did uh, you know set up and configure uh, redux um, and connected redux to our application so redux generally you can say that redux r runs in parallel with your app and you have to connect and to 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 this uh, uh, centralized store and then you have to subscribe to for some data and today my objective is to show you uh, how we can update that state and make those updates come across uh, but a little before we we started i was just uh, showing uh, people that one of the community projects that we do here uh, at Agile Ventures and so we're currently working on this community uh, uh, website for Community Health West London for Kensington and Chelsea where we are uh, building um, uh, a search engine for community services uh, which is a, a, a good cause uh, I think and so we are this is not a ready-made product yet but we are getting closer to uh, uh, we're, f we're fairly close to being able to, to hand this over. We have another perhaps six, seven days to work on that. Uh, and uh, then it will go live by the end of this month. Uh, but yeah, but there was another topic uh, that, I, uh, that we kind of touched upon. And that is my side project. And um, thank you for bringing this up. It's a passion project of mine. So I will try to clock me so I don't talk too much about it. But I am... I'm in the process of writing uh, a novel, actually. I want to write a book. And I found this fantastic story about an 18th century um, witch uh, hunt, actually. Like in, in a very small village in Sweden, uh, 12 women were accused of, of being witches. And this is fairly late in the game. The... Um, the witch processes were very popular in the uh, 16th and 17th century, but in the 18th century that died out, and people, you know, this is the Renaissance, and you know, people became a bit smarter. But for some reason, in 1757, uh, a guy—I I bet he was just sexually frustrated or something—he came up with this crazy idea that a, a young girl was was a witch, and that he that she admitted it to him, and together with with her you know a lot of other girls in in the city they probably turned him down you know when he was you know just flirting with them and that's why he we became upset but one thing led to another and they were interrogated by the uh, by the bishop for that parish or for that part of sweden and the bishop was actually uh like reluctant to believe in this this guy he thought that this whole thing was 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 just nonsense so he was about to acquit those women, but then he asked them, would you like to press charges against your accuser? And then they said, uh, no, they don't, because they just want peace and quiet, and they didn't understand the whole thing, why they were being accused. So they just wanted to go home and, uh, and forget about this whole ordeal. And that thing, the fact that they turned down, you know, making an accusation against the, the, their accuser or, or prosecute him, was taken by this bishop as a, a weird thing, like an, almost like an admission of guilt. So then he said that, well, now I believe you're witches because you don't want to, to press charges, which is nonsense, right? One thing led to another. One month later, they all uh, um, came clean and said, yes, we are witches. And there was this, this, uh, this, big, uh, um, this big trial. Uh, but what did happen was that they were being tortured to to confess. They confessed to being being witches, and so it was it 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 became a great scandal in 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 Sweden. It took like four or five years before before they were fully acquitted again. Uh, and there was this noble woman, this countess uh, from Stockholm, that got involved in this case, and so she will be one of my main characters. Uh, because she helped out those women with with financial aid and also by giving them an uh, uh, you know providing them legal counsel and so on 
and it went so high up to, so the Swedish parliament took up this this matter and the Swedish courts took took up the, the highest court and uh, they were acquitted and they were given some money for it but the funny thing is that the guys who tortured them they got like eight days in prison not eight years or eight months eight days in prison prison these women were handicapped you know for 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 the rest of their lives and the guy that that uh, put them on trial he went on to become the archbishop of sweden and he's like he's a big guy so the story will surround about around the injustice that happened to them uh, because they were women but also how in just the system is even though they were acquitted their life were ruined and their prosecutors and their, their, their you know the people that hurt them they just went on with their lives and had a fantastic life and you know and and uh, um, it's a little bit of Kafka uh, approach to the whole thing but I think it's a it's a it's a worthy story to tell because I think that it it connects back to what happens nowadays uh, with with people that are unjustly prosecuted uh you know people who who do it to them they just go free not not much is happening uh and uh, and they they draw the short straw so this uh this um uh, this book will be placed in in 17th century sweden but hopefully uh you know at least touch upon some of the modern day society's issues so what do you think, guys? Is it going to be fiction, but based on these real events? Well, I will use uh, a lot of artistic discretion to 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 add a little bit of fiction, but ma- mainly, you know, like how the characters are, how they think, and what they feel. But I, I'm I'm going to try to base it on on real events as much as I can. So you're like the Saint Shakespeare. Ha! Huh. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the story sounds very interesting. I think you can do a lot based around that that type of topic. Definitely, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm uh, I have some some practical things like you know the Swedish nobility, uh, they were all from somewhere. You know, we had a lot of French influence in Sweden back then, and the Swedish language that that they spoke was much different they all spoke french at, at that time and swedish was the the common people language right so for instance like when i i'm i'm uh, writing a um a chapter where where katarina de la Gardie, which is the she's the the main character of, of the book meets with sara which is one of the girls accused and tortured uh and i am i'm struggling a little bit in how will they talk to each other you know, i mean Will they talk in Swedish? Will they? Will Katarina express any feelings, or will she be just, uh, you know, very, very uh, formal and you know stuff like that? So it's it's quite fun and it's quite challenging to to write about these things. But uh, um, it's 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 a passion project. You know, not everything is about code all the time. That's the way it is. <laughs> Definitely, but mm-hmm. sounds awesome. Mm-hmm. Sounds very interesting. So we can have an autographed book, hopefully, in the next couple of years. Well, in the next decade or so, absolutely. <laughs> in the next decade, when when I actually, uh, you know, again, it's uh, it's my uh, I've written speeches and I've written articles and you know things like that, uh, but I've never written written a novel before. Uh, so we'll see how that works out. Uh, Right, so we're live on Twitch, people. Uh, also, if you can uh, be there and if you can uh, have the chat um, or use the chat if you f- f- for for that, uh, that would be the best thing for us. And here we are. Uh, I'm going to pull up my code. Uh, I'm going to. I'm going to have to sign out and sign in again and see if that makes a difference. Sure thing, brother. Sure thing. Uh, let's see. Here's my terminal, and it was Agile Ventures, right? LS first React app. See the first React app code, right? And it's already almost full. You see? The fuck? Mm-mm-mm. Where would should be okay? We should be okay. 
right so uh, we um, we spoke about this um, let's see I, I, let me just check my index JS right so so we have two components and this is demo code so you know n nothing is set in stone and and we don't have to don't judge me for the for the uh, for the structure uh, you know of this of these components but uh, at this stage we have one component that is called connected component that uses the old old style um, yeah. class components uh, and as I understand we have shitloads of them in uh, uh, in the project that we are working on uh, the Sen Senfkyon Senf how do you pronounce that Anya by the way Senf Köln or uh, yeah Zenf uh, Zenf Zenf okay right yeah. okay uh, and then we did pretty much the same thing but we used uh, a functional component that y made use of hooks uh, so now and the only thing we did was to display a greeting and the greeting said something like uh, hello world from Redux I think uh, yes it did okay so uh, what, uh, what I would like to do today is to show you a little more in depth what a reducer can do and how it can handle uh, the the uh, update of the of the application state which again is not really an update per se but rather um, but rather a totally new object uh, uh, it, the, the reducer is is uh, creating a new object of state and then the application kind of um, subscribes to it but so my idea is that we will remove the connected component or at least not use it for anything at this point no well I need to why can't I comment things out really okay well I will remove you then there we go uh, so we're not using any of these of these components at this stage right only the hook component and I will create a, a situation here with uh, a, let's see I need to wrap this in uh, per, in parentheses right so or not there we go uh, so let's see I will create an wow 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 hold on a second why am I getting these errors why am I getting these errors this should work but so do I do I need to import? I had this problem before with with uh, oh come on don't give me this fragment and uh, fragments right why are oh return is hold on a second why why what 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 this should Mike my, my I don't understand why I'm getting this. Is the is the like a slash not at the end of fragments instead of at the beginning or? No, it that's when no? I close the fragment, so that should be in principle okay. Okay. Well, let me just add another uh, little input. Oh God damn it! Input, right? And now we should be able to format this. This should not give remove unreachable code after the semicolon. Or yeah. 
Okay, I, I uh, so let's see if I format now. Okay, now he added the, the okay, okay. So so it's my formatter. It 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 was it was a problem with the formatter. Mm -hmm. I don't really understand why that was happening. But if I say input, um, okay, input type type uh, type equal uh, text, and we want to give it a name equals. Uh, equals new greeting. We're gonna call it new greeting, or should I call give it an an input right? And then we're gonna add a button. Button, and then just uh, change change greeting. Right. So we want to change the greeting. Let's see if we can spin this up or what's go what's going on. So yarn start. Uh, right, 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 right. Uh, it's gonna be. Mm -mm -mm. Right. Let's see if we can. see this on our in our browser here we should in principle just see that immediately unless I have something else running no I don't right so what we what we want to do we, we want to create a user interface when a user can type in something and then uh, then um, uh, change the the display of that greeting on uh, on the page so we have this hello world from redux at this point and we have a new uh, a little bit of new uh, ui here right so i can probably just uh, add a div here and move this inside uh, format our code and that is now on the new um, on a new on a new line right so whatever is being inputted here I wonder if I can do this actually so I can simplify this code a little bit uh, right I can okay so whenever we change this we want uh, our application state to uh, to be um, uh, or our our local state uh, to be to be updated with that text, right? So I'm just gonna use use state hook in here, and I'm gonna create a constant, uh, and we will say uh, new. Or greeting, uh, no, new greeting, and then set new greeting like this, and we will say that we will use the use state hook, and that will be an empty string from the beginning, and here on this guy we will say on change. So there is, as you know, uh, JavaScript is event driven, and so we we will there is an event on uh, on an input field that is called change. Uh, so every time you change the the value of the input field, uh, an event is being triggered. Uh, so we can take take that into account. So on change, we will have we want to uh, execute a new a function that will say set greeting. Uh, uh, to something and what would that be uh, well we will say event and then we say event target value right so that now our our um, local state will be updated 
with every keystroke that we are uh, we are uh, um, we are inputting into this field, and we can just do a sanity check just for the for the sake of it. Uh, so we could just dis display that. Uh, so we could say uh, new greeting like this, and so now I will say hello, hello. No. Set new greeting is use set new greeting is not a function. What? Of course it's a function. Why why are you doing this to me? Of course it's a function. Oh Jesus. Oh gee. Oh gosh, what am I doing wrong here? Of course it's a function. Set new greeting. Use state, use state, use state. Oh, because I'm uh, careless. It's uh, it needs to be a hard bracket. Now I see that. Right there we go. Hello, there we go. Hello Thomas. Right. So as I continue to type, I type, and you can see the. Uh, the text show up at all time on the on the screen but that's not the behavior I'm looking for I want to use this to dispatch this to to our um, to our application state so for that I need to say I need to import use dispatch uh, like this and then I just want to say that const dispatch uh, equals use dispatch and now here it's a I can use on click so when we click on the button uh, we can say you uh, just dispatch an action and you remember I told you that actions need to have two um, uh, two or two properties one called type and by um, by convention we always type those uh, we write up those types with upcase letter so I'm gonna call this one change change greeting and the that optional argument would be the payload and we want to set the payload to to this gr new greeting that we were just uh, creating like this right so now we will be up uh, changing something Thomas and this will dispatch something but we can't really see that because we need to update our reducer and so what I will do now is going to head over to the reducer. I will allow this they reducer. Are the heroes of the village. Oh, there's a bit of background noise. Who's, uh, can we mute somebody? Right. Um, right. So I will allow this reducer to take another take another argument. And before I write any more code, I will just set a debugger here and open up my dev tools uh, like this uh, and hopefully I will write so let's reload and we're just gonna stop here and now I can say hello Thomas Thomas and if I now click on change greeting the debugger in the reducer will uh, be invoked and so here I can take a look at the action and the action has a type and it has a payload as you can clearly see here uh, if you want to check it out on uh, 
in your console we can just just type action here and we can see that there is both a type and a payload right so what we now what we can do now knowing that we are in the reducer with this with this um, uh, object available uh, to us we can now say that we can return uh, we can make an if statement here for instance like so we can say if uh, action dot type equals 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 uh, change change greeting right then we want to say return uh, a new object and that object will be partially state the old state but the greeting will be not what it used to be but rather the action payload whatever is stored in payload and if we send off if we invoke this reducer with anything else we will just return state as we did before uh, so we won't do anything at all. So this one uh, will now listen for the type of the of the action and see if it's change greeting. If it is, it will create a new object based on state, but with with greeting changed. And so in principle, we should be able. We remove the debugger, so we don't need those dev tools anymore hello Mike are you drawing something on my screen all right uh, no I was just uh, I just saw a pen and I thought yeah that's I was that's, just thinking what it is up. okay yeah. oh. hi guys hi hi Mike nice to have you with us uh, yeah. so here we can say hello Mike for instance and now we're going to change the greeting and now we have gone all the way through the reducer to update this this um, this component and the application state and now we see hello Mike uh, or hello whatever and we change it like this right now in this example which this is a very trivial example of course so uh, don't judge me uh, for it but what we could say is that uh, let me see by the way if I can use those fragments again I should be able to use them yeah I am able to use them but my uh, my IDE doesn't want to color code them which is a bit annoying but it is what it is right okay but but what if we want to uh, separate the display of this um, of this uh, greeting to another component right so we can do that we can remove it from here and remove this from this component altogether uh, we can remove these imports we don't need them for anything uh, anymore it's it annoys the shit out of me that these fragments are not working so I'm gonna remove them too like this right so now let's see yeah so now we can say hello Mike again but it doesn't matter because nothing will be changed here because we don't we're not displaying the greeting so how about we uh, we create a new component and we call it uh, greeting greeting display or whatever but let's just do greeting display and Royal Air Force uh, Central Europe right and we're just gonna uh, sorry we're just gonna import uh, import from react redux the use selector uh, module 
and then in here we're just gonna say uh, const const greeting we can use this greeting equals use selector and here we just do state state like this and now we will just say uh, greeting greeting like this and we can wrap this in that format or code okay he my formatter is a bit weird so now we are changing state in this hooked component that's where the change is happening but this one is is just sub, uh, just subscribing to that to that change so i just wanted to show you that these things doesn't have to happen in the same component of course because that would be uh, totally unrealistic and not just nonsense so you can you can change your application state in one part of the application and subscribe to that change in another part of the application so if we reload this now uh, oh yeah I need to include this also here uh, so I need to import uh, import uh, from uh, greetings uh, greetings display the greetings display and I just want to display it here so we'll say greetings display like this right and now we should be okay so it says hello world from Redux because that is the original state as you remember and now again we can say hello Anya for instance uh, not hell but that's not nice all right hello thank uh, you yeah well you know uh, it was just a, glad glad just, that I came <laughs> <laughs> uh, and now we we uh, we can see this this happening right so again I mean we won't make a world a better place with a hello world application but for uh, as a proof of concept you can just see that that this is this is happening uh, directly in in this particular component uh, because it is using it is using this dispatch function right which is uh, a hook that we are importing from the react redux and on the click of the button we are uh, dispatching this action that uh, that we want to uh, to dispatch basically right and you don't necessarily have to do this exactly here we could wrap this in a function and this is good for one-liners if the only thing you want to do is to do the dispatch but let's say that I I uh, call this I create a new function and I say you know uh, send off the greeting to the reducer you know or whatever right uh, reducer right and so here I could create that function so const send off uh, the greeting uh, to I should probably not use so long um, so uh, so um, uh, that long f function names of course that's nonsense uh, and so here we can just dispatch this and we could say something like uh, you know uh, yeah well we don't need to do anything else uh, but this is if you want to do uh, other stuff I just can't come up with anything else uh, at the moment uh, we will still say hello Thomas or Carl we can say hello to Carl uh, and it, it is still happening so you know you don't necessarily have to to uh, to do these things directly in uh, uh, on the button here 
you can do you can wrap them in a in a function should you want to do that uh, right um, sorry Thomas yep go ahead could I see the greeting display file again for a moment sure um, this one is pretty simple at this stage thanks yeah but I'm trying to cut along and you went a bit fast oh sure sure absolutely so uh, we can just add a, an h h3 uh, here we will display the greeting something like that right and we format our code it looks like this and we should be pretty okay on that and the key to this lies in the reducer that the reducer needs to to recognize um, recognize the the action type and one of the questions I think Anya you asked me this last time around about the action types uh, right now I, I can demonstrate what we could do to introduce action types in this solution and then you you guys can be the judge if that is actually worth the hassle or not uh, um, for you know in big projects I would say it is in small ones it is not that that uh, super important uh, so if we want to do that we probably want to you know quite often that's what the, the what, what happens is that in your in this folder that I called state there would be another folder called actions something like that right and then in in the you would say new file and you will call this action action types dot js and here we could do something like i think export export uh, change greeting equals change greeting export or is it const yeah export const right that's what it is change greeting to change greeting right and the way they use it is to import import uh, from this action action type file from action types um this change uh, I think you well hold on a second I'm not sure I never do this so change greeting yeah exactly you import change greeting from here and here you just say instead of a string you just use this this constant you understand and why is this relevant well because this works now right you can you can say change well right exactly you can just choose this uh, with intellisense you know with your with your with your um, with the pop up and there is very little risk that you will make a a, a typo or anything you understand uh and the same thing would be then applied um on these in this component you will just import this action type uh, in here from that would be this state no uh, where am I yeah that should be state why are you not popping up here right actions and action types right and then we will just say change greeting here change greeting like this and now I would also just use this like this 
Right. And and again, the good thing here is that this would this can pop up in these in this auto format or you know in the suggestions. And function wise, it's the same thing. It doesn't add anything to the table. What? Well, okay, it's one dot, Thomas. There we go. Right, and now I can start. Now, now I can can change the greeting. Greeting. Right. So you can see that. So, so in terms of in terms of functionality, it doesn't do anything. The only thing that it helps me with, in my opinion, is that I can't really misspell this and it looks a little better perhaps you know because it's not a string but it it does involve uh, another import that's one thing so i would say that's on the negative side uh, on the positive side if i have many of them and you know in 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 zenf we we, we have quite a lot of these these action types you have a, a central place where you basically clear them and you can add comments what they do and what they are used for or so on right um, but that's that's how you create those action types does that make sense people or not at all yeah yeah actually tables are the biggest problem in uh, in day to day um, debugging so Absolutely. Uh, if you find a way you can reduce the typos, the better. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Anya, you did stumble upon those action types, didn't you? Uh, yes. When we checked the the issue to work on with Tassilo, mm -hmm. and so yeah, I guess it uh, it makes sense. However, I guess we we can't go via hooked components right we uh at this stage um, no if unless you refactor yeah. exactly exactly yeah which brings us to the next topic now how can i do all of this in um in a component that is not uh using hooks right but but rather um you know the cl the more classic uh, uh, class components uh probably want to do the the uh, the same thing here so what we're gonna do is we're gonna comment out well I'm gonna comment out this guy which is the hooked hooked component and I'm gonna open up the connected component again and we will um, we will do the same thing here I'm going to comment out a lot of code because we will not use map state to props uh, and we will not display anything here as we did before but rather uh, add these these um, this input field the same input field that we had in the hooked component. So I'm actually going to copy this from here. Uh, just going to copy the whole thing from this guy, place it instead of this props greeting, sorry, like this, format my code again. Okay, so here we are. Right, so, um, uh, so here, the only thing I want to do is this uh, this set state. So we're going to use the the uh, the state object, and we will just say uh, we're going to call this state new greeting new greeting uh, like this, and. Um, Right, so so we can't use this. Well, we can we can say this dot send the send off this uh, 
So we're going to need to create this function here. And here we want to use uh, this patch, right? But we don't have this patch uh, available to us directly, unless I'm mistaken. Let's see. Uh, Red, let's. I need to actually check it up. Redux. Uh, this no map dispatch, map dispatch to props, map dispatch to props. Exactly. I need to pass this in. How do I do that? Oh, apparently I checked this up a while back. Uh, map dispatch to props. Connect null null, and then we just do map dispatch to props button needs to be aware uh, of dispatch map dispatch to props is dispatch well no 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 okay so can I just do can I just do this uh, props dispatch I think I can do this. Um, and then just this the same the same action as I did here. So I'm just gonna import this action uh and I'm gonna imp just the, the the action type doesn't change and the the action still needs to look the same as, as always. I think we can do this payload. So I can ask a question. Hold on a second. Just a second. Yeah. Uh, this state new greeting. Props. Da, 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 da. Let's see. Map state to props, and this will be just nothing at all. We don't need this. Uh, let Let me just just see if this works before I I take a question. Okay. Uh, hooks component is not used. So we just want to display the connected, connected uh, component here, right? Right. Let's see. Uh, can no? I probably need to reload this, right? Right. So hello, Thomas. Right. So now it works again. So this, we got the same functionality, but with a different component. You, we are not we're not displaying the uh, the hooked component anymore, but the connected component. So we we but we have the same exact same functionality with this one. Uh, Carl, sorry, you wanted to ask a question. Well, it answered itself. I was just like lost for at the beginning, and I wasn't sure what we were doing. And now I see we we're just asking the user for the input just with a connected component. Yeah. 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 And at the beginning, I got lost eventually, and I was like, right. I don't know what we're doing anymore. So we have pretty much the same, This we have the same uh, functionality. Uh, I can display both of them. Um, um, you know, they look exactly the same, so I should probably uh, say something like uh, H3. H H three uh, and we will say hook. This is the hooked component, right? Hooks, uh, and then on this one, on the connected component, we just want to say uh, class, right? And so we can see. So this one is the class component. It works, and we can say this use the same thing hello hello shima like this for instance right and it works here as well so it doesn't and you see the funny funny thing is that you know the the return statement is pretty much the same thing as always right it has the the divs and the the html looks pretty much the same the only thing that is different is what kind of functionality you were invoking 
on the on change event in this case or on click and so on right um, but they are very much alike in terms what they return uh, but the way to get there is slightly different using hooks versus using the more traditional uh, class component but you, so you're achieving the same goal but in two different ways but the interesting part is that the greeting component is still using the the hook and the selector and it 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 uh, subscribes to the same state object so it doesn't matter how you changed it whether it was using class components and the more traditional you know uh, dispatch or if you change it using the um, uh, the hook method it's still there and this guy uh, the greeting display is just subscribing to that data and and uh, and displaying it does that make sense kind of yes kinda? Mm -hmm. all right what what uh, what what can i do to to explain it even simpler do which somebody try to you know, have a shot on explaining it you know, themselves. Um, Mike, do you know what's going on here? No, I was distracted. So. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no props. Yeah, you got me. <laughs> yeah, I did. Uh, right. Uh, Daniel? I mean, so, what, right. what is you selector here? That's a good question. Use selector is uh, it's uh, not a, it's not a very good name for a hook that will help us extract the part of the state that is relevant for us at any given time. In this component, the greeting component, the only part of the state we care about is the greeting, right? So I'm using this destruct method, but what I'm really doing is to tell uh, tell my uh, my uh, um, my component that uh, I want to get hold of the content of this of this greeting property of state that's what you selector does all right, and you explained it. I mean, we need that for the hook, I guess. But if we even use this greeting display component with the class connected component, it will still work. Uh, uh, That's if, the way I understood it now. Yeah, so if, I mean, you mean like if you want to write a, a greeting display component using class components, then you would you would have to uh, import the connect and you have to map state to props uh, basically yeah so I understood so understood we're using both the connected component JSX and the hooked component JSX is using the greeting display mm, well okay so the connected component and hook component they are dispatching they, they are changing or creating a new state object right that's that's the only thing these two guys do. The greeting, uh, the greeting uh, display component is taking care of showing that to to our end user. So these are the responsibilities of the of those components. They are total. They are independent of each other. Yeah, so one uses React hooks and one is just a normal class-based component, right? The, yeah, the connected component is the class component. Perhaps I should call it class component yeah. and the other one functional component. But, but uh, yes, between those two, that's 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 correct. And we are yeah, using and, uh, the difference is that uh, with the class-based com component, which is the connected component. Um, you'll need to map uh, the state to props for um, so that you, you you can be able to access um, these states as props in your 
in your um, compound. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very bad. So mm -hmm. let's 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 yeah. um, like let's 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 add something to this initial state. Let's say. Uh, you know another 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 property right uh, property and we will say equals not equals sorry uh, uh, some 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 other content right so now we have another property as part of the of the state um, but it's not being displayed anywhere because we we haven't told our application that we need it so what I could do is basically this const uh, another 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 property uh, equals use selector and then selector and then the same thing as we did before state uh, and returns uh, state uh, another another property right so now if I would display this then we will probably see that somewhere here uh, yeah some other content you see we, we, we can see that on on screen because we're subscribing to this one right now if I would like to to uh, uh, to uh, display it in a class component then I need to again I need to reinstate this map state to props and you know and I would say some 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 random stuff or you know well okay we can say another what was it we called it another content I already forgot uh, another property right uh, so I can show I can do it like this like this and so we need to pass this guy in here map state uh, to props and I would probably have to showcase it somewhere so we can do it here uh, and we will say uh, what is it what is it with this this props uh, another property like this I think right so we have some other content being displayed by this particular component now uh, so this is this is the way you kind of subscribe to uh, to state objects uh, in class components you have to use this connect and map state to props you have to pass it in and so on that's the way you do it it's much faster to do it uh, in a, uh, in a functional component using hooks and actually you don't even have to have those two uh, lines of code what you could do in principle is just to say greeting and then comma another property and then you can just remove it from this from here can comment this guy out and it will still work uh, when you reload your page uh, because uh, that's the way you do it basically it's uh, you destruct that that uh, state object instead of uh, uh, using two lines you can just use one and it's pretty much the same thing uh, right, so now I can. Yeah, actually, remove. we've only learned about destructuring in JavaScript now during Work the Web. Good stuff. I just, got, I just got started with JavaScript just before this. I'm not really very knowledgeable in it yet. Got it, got it, got it. Well, uh, it takes a lifetime to to uh, to get it to work. Actually, um, I mean to learn. Some... There are so many, so many things. Go ahead, Carl. So I don't know about the other people, but then sometimes I am kind of struggling to follow along when, like today with the demo, or I dropped by when Mirsad and Tassilo were looking at Firebase, and I was actually just totally lost, and then I left again. Uh, but, you know, don't beat yourself up by that, because I would probably be very lost on, on, on Firebase as well. Uh, 
No, I, I'm not. I'm just mentioning it because I don't know. Maybe it's, I'm not the only one who's. Absolutely not. Sometimes. Yeah. You're not the only one. Oh, maybe you're the only one. Haha. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. You're not the only one. <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, Thomas, mm -hmm. when when using um, React hooks, do you still use a, a provider like? Uh, yeah, I, I remember. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so that is that is that stays this that stays the same. You use a provider and oh, you okay. wrap the entire application. Everything, everything that will be displayed uh, in your app oh, okay. uh, needs to be wrapped by the provider. Now, in this demo, so we 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 are displaying those directly here, those greeting display and the, all those components. But usually, what you have is a, is an app component. That is like the the, the yeah. head head of the spear. That's the, the top of the iceberg. Um, yep. Yeah. And then you have a chain or a tree of of sub components. Uh, but it doesn't really matter. You know, you you uh, you can you can uh, you're free to do whatever you want uh, with this, basically, right? So so just just to showcase another thing, just because I I've, I've got some questions about this uh, from other students at some point is this the only way we can use react dome well I can tell you this that if I would have if I go to my public folder and in my HTML here add another div and I call it you know another root another root like this and if I go to now to my uh, index.js and I just bluntly copy this whole thing and paste this back in but here we say uh, another root do you understand? now we will probably end up with two versions of the app on the same page do you understand? Which is of course yeah. nonsense, but I just wanted to tell you that nothing is set in stone. You can do whatever, right? The the interesting thing, which we will be asking in just a second, that if I change here, change here, will this change be uh, will come across on on the on the first one, you know, uh, on on the other uh, on the other component, and it actually does, yeah. right? So it's mm -hmm. it's those changes come across everywhere. I don't see a use case to to you know to have this displayed twice, but in principle you could um, if you if you would ever want to do that. Uh, Carl, did you raise your hand? Yeah. So do I understood it as um, like rendering the connect component, hook component, and stuff in provider. We could also put that in the app. Uh, from AppJSX. Well, or... uh, not sure if, if that is the... So usually what well, what, what you see on, on most apps is this, right? You just you just have a... Pro well, I forget about this. Let's, let's forget. You just have apps, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's, that's the normal state of affairs. That's how you use it. But it, you don't have to uh, use that. You know, you can do what I just did here as well. Uh, if you want to do that. Now, quite often when you work with things like internal routing, uh, then then you kind of have the router first and then the router displays the um, the app component, for instance, right? Which brings us to another topic. I will talk about it on Thursday. And because what we are building with React and m many of these, these single this component based applications is 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 basically a single page application right the only html that will be rendered by the browser lies in this public index html file that basically doesn't contain anything useful uh but but this uh, div that we spoke about which is the connector it kind of connects the the uh, index.js with the index html and this is the div or this is the place where where your entire app will 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 uh, be displayed and function now quite often you want to display uh you know different urls or you want to be able to share those urls for, for instance so if i just for a second go back to 
the KCSC application that I was that I started with today. Now, if we click on services, right? First of all, you know the content is changed. Uh, we have a sub menu, and you know we have a lot of other other stuff here. But I want you to pay attention to the URL. The URL is, is also different. Now it says slash services. And if I click on about, you will say about slash organization. And if we click on contact, we say contact. Okay. These are not real routes per se, uh, like more traditional uh, web-based applications. We are basically faking those routes. Uh, we're telling uh, React to to modify this this uh, this field uh, but it is still the same index HTML that was being displayed Not, nothing has changed in uh, uh, in that only the content of that div that is called root has been changed uh, by us clicking on this link uh, so these these routes are are handled by uh, by a package that is called React. Sorry, that was not what I wanted. That is called uh, React Router. Uh, yeah, that is not part of the of the of the React library per, per se. Sorry, I cut somebody off. I think. Yeah, I was just saying routes, uh, React routes, or something. Uh, yeah. Let's see which one we're using here. Oh, that's the self client. That's not the one. Uh, we were there. There it is. And uh, by the way, that that application that I showed you is also open source. So, uh, so uh, uh, so you can you can read it, read about it. And these are the routes that are actually present here. And the way we deal with these is let's see components and we have something called let's have a look at the app then uh right that wasn't it uh let me see something yeah let's let me just see what 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 where is the index js what's going on here uh where is, my, where is my index JS? There it is. Oh yeah, we have one that is called routes JSX, right? So the index JS is uh, doing a lot of things. We have the fragment here. Why I don't know really why we have the fragment here. We don't need this fragment for anything. Uh, and then we have the provider, which you recognize from our demo. Then. Then we have uh, something called helmet provider. It doesn't matter what it is at, at this point. Uh, and then we have the theme provider because we are using a material, material UI. And then we are normalizing everything. Uh, the, the CSS, this is a, a, a hacky solution. And then we have the routes, right? We don't display the app component here. And the routes is interesting because it's in the route that we basically define the paths that will be displayed, right? So we have a root path and that redirects to home and then we have the home path and that is the component that is called index view and services view and so on. So here we are passing in a component as property to the app component, you know, they are all using that. Um, and so our app component is basically uh, responsible for displaying different content depending on what we what sort of component we passed into it right but they are all functional components uh, we don't we don't use class components in this one at all and therefore we can uh, navigate between between different pa parts of the uh, of the application like this uh, Right, but I will talk more about uh, about uh, the React Router uh, or React Router Dome uh, in another in another session because it calls for more more demos. Um, I will probably use the same uh, same React application that we used for this demo 
to to showcase this but uh, um, uh, but expand the functionality a little bit and th this is Sorry. actually fairly important because a lot of apps if you build such single page applications a lot of these apps actually need to have routing uh, because otherwise you will kind of get lost in in knowing what sort of app um, what sort of content you are actually displaying that's one thing but the second thing that is important that these links are shareable you can you can i can send this off to you guys and you can um, uh, you can click on it uh, and follow that right uh, and that is what people are used to when we are sharing stuff on social media or in emails or in in chat and so on you don't you don't have to always be dependent on just visiting the the landing page and then navigate from there uh, that just wouldn't be be sustainable it wouldn't be a good user experience uh, so i don't know if that makes sense to you now but hopefully it will at some point that makes sense Good. So, Anya, did you learn anything today? Um, actually, I felt like it, it was like more like regoing a little bit through stuff that I had seen a, a little bit with mm -hmm. the hooks and uh, and also the routing. I mean, it, it does make sense to me a little bit because of Vue.js, which uh, kind of works the same. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'll definitely re-go through that and and practice because I I think I think it's starting to to get a little bit more um at least like more not how to say comfortable or like with the the React way of of handling the state. But uh, yeah, of course that's uh that's just the first step, and I still need to practice to to kind of really get the hang of it that was a very diplomatic answer uh, Anya <laughs> you're very careful but you you'll get a hang of this of course it's in it all it all lies in just doing it over and over again and then you will you will it will become a second nature as you see I I used to write a lot of class components before uh, so I I uh, I knew how to do this and just a year you know since I stopped using class components uh, my memory fades away. I need to look up certain things, uh, but uh, ah, yeah. but it it did look a lot uh, like Chinese to me just uh, maybe ten days ago or two weeks ago before we started to to have a look at this, mm -hmm. and uh, and now it's already starts looking more familiar. So it, that that's a good sign to me. <laughs> it is definitely a good sign. That's definitely a good sign. Yeah, so I think it's a good question. question. Now there were two people talking. Which one, Carl? Do you want to go? I have a question to Anya. So you've been diving into Zenf.Köln a bit. How did you make sense of it, like the code? I can't really say that I've been. Well, um, I started diving actually into it a little bit till the end of last week, um, but I haven't had the time to look at it uh, since uh, uh, since this weekend. Uh, I, don't, I can't really say that uh, the whole app now is fully making sense uh, to me, but uh, I think the one part that we were having a look at with uh, Tassilo and with regards to kind of changing the state, um, because he took the time to explain it to me, made more sense, but it still it was a lot of code. So I, I think it's, uh, I mean, it's still tough for me to really... I, I I really can't say that I feel at ease in okay. the in the Zenf co uh, code just yet. Yeah. Yeah, but that's comforting for me. Oh sure, then yeah, I I definitely need more time for sure. And how did you organize with Tassilo to meet up and look at the code? Uh, just over Slack, he's pretty reactive over Slack and very motivated to to work and and help everyone that wants to work and and code. So, I think if you just give him a shout out and ask when he would have time, uh, sometimes yeah, even noticed. there, yeah. I'm the one who doesn't have much time. Ah, okay. Yeah. Well, the other way around, you can tell him when you have time, and if he 
maybe has time to meet up and discuss a specific part or even give you like an idea of the next thing you could be working on and explain a bit more extensively. On that topic, I know we kind of reached the end for today already, but would it be possible to talk with Thomas and maybe Mike about GitHub Actions? Right. I, I am I am a bit lost on GitHub Actions. It's, it's on my to-do list and um, I'm really sorry that it hasn't made it to the top of that to-do list. Uh, so I, I am probably not the right person yet uh, because okay. I need to dive into this. Mike, have you been using GitHub Actions before? Perhaps Mike zoned out. Well, I can. Well, I'll just explain yeah. quickly. I also don't get it that yeah. sometimes. Yeah, I think I, I can just have a look at what you're saying because. Um... You mean that I share a screen or? You could. You could. I can stop my screen sharing. Uh... Yep, I think that's fine. Um, so what I don't get about it is sometimes uh, the tests run and pass, and sometimes they fail. So I'm uh, got to select my. I should be sharing my screen. Yes, you are. Yes, we can see your screen. Absolutely. So here's an example of uh, one of the new tests that ran. Five, three hours ago, it failed. And it says when accessing the application, it couldn't access the API. Right. But I've added, I've added the environment variable for Mapbox. And then sometimes they would run. Sometimes they would fail. And then now I also added the other environment variable for the database. And it's still like sometimes here the green ones, sometimes it runs, and then sometimes it fails. And that and this was an example where it says it, access tokens required. Yeah, so I'm kind of lost. I don't know how to get further. I was thinking of like asking a question on Twitter or on a different Slack and hoping someone. Helps may me I out. may I ask is. Um... Are, are all of these runs that if you go back to the to the overview uh with, yeah so so the ones that are failing are not exactly the same ones because i see the pull request 52 51 50 and 49 failed but 48 and 47 did you have a situation where let's say <coughs> you know 40 48 is failing sometimes and and passing at other times or are they always different different pull requests that are are, are failing uh it's hard it's hard for me to tell i first of all i think like these older ones i think they fixed to the state of the workflow file at that time like if i rerun them now i don't think they use the current workflow file and I, I had the impression, I think there was a failing one once that I ran again and then it passed, but like I'm not right. totally sure. Anymore. Right. So, so, uh, so see, I, right. So this is build 4950. Okay. So they are not pull requests. So pull request is uh, 111. Okay. So pull request 111 is failing. It failed three times and pull request 113. Right. But okay. Uh, uh, right, that's a good point, maybe, because pull request 111 was created before the current state of the work test workflow. Right. The encouraging the thing is that, you know, uh, PR 109 and the others passed, right? So that's, that's, the, that's the encouraging part of the whole thing, right? Uh, yeah. I would wait it out to see if, if any, once we get past those you know, if Tassilo or whoever created those uh, that are failing would update uh, his code with with the merged code, then then um, perhaps that would work. Uh, these are all warnings. Yeah. Uh, this is the one. Yeah, that... I was actually looking if it says somewhere that, that it is using the environment variables. Right. So uh, out of uh, curiosity, how did you add those uh, NVARs? 
So I found a, a blog article about it and then looked at the official thing also. You can add secret environment variables under settings and secrets. Okay, good. That's that's good. That's what I was looking for. Yeah. And this taps and then, in and this yeah. and what what continuous integration service is this running? Is this running Semaphore or uh No, we're are... using GitHub Actions. We're not using Semaphore. Okay, so 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 again, I'm totally new at GitHub Actions, but so so GitHub Actions is is a CI service basically. Uh, uh, Mike, do you know this? Yeah, it's a CI/CD. It's a CI/CD tool uh, that you can use. Okay, so they are competing with Travis and Semaphore, like or or what? Yeah, so it's, yeah, you would say that. Oh. So it's it's another alternative to Travis okay. and Semaphore. Okay. It's right. Yeah, right. Uh, and I think. Yeah, the, it's it's uh, GitHub makes it easier to set it up with yeah. projects on GitHub. So, so basically, within a year's time, not neither Travis and Semaphore will, will exist because Microsoft takes over the fucking world. Okay. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. So my boot camp, when I finished, we actually like we had one little lecture on tests, and it kind of quickly covered GitHub. I mean, CI, and it was with Travis, mm -hmm. and then it got replaced very quickly with github actions and okay. yeah yeah so we we use uh, we use travis uh, for a long time and then we used semaphore for a long time and now we're back on on travis for a few projects and semaphore 2 for other projects i've never used github actions before so i don't know much about it uh, i was naively under the impression that github actions would just trigger uh, on uh, an external service, so I thought that's why I'm I'm I, I'm surprised by this. But I, I thought that this wasn't a CI service in itself, but rather somewhere uh, like an interface from GitHub that would allow you to trigger certain certain uh, uh, things on a, a CI service. But that's that's good. interesting. You can you can say what kind of system the yeah, 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 things would run on. Oh, this like is the Windows same thing. So so they they this this is the same functionality that you have on Travis and and Semaphore and Jenkins and uh, Circle CI. These are the four big ones, uh, basically. And now this, I mean, GitHub is is GitHub. So. They so the last thing I did was I added the React app database URL environment variable here, and not as a secret because it. I mean, it, I had the impression that it's not a secret. That is, that is not a secret. No, I don't think yeah. it's. Uh, this is the dev and database, so it doesn't matter. I feel like this workflow is done. For as far as my knowledge, it should be fine now. So I mm -hmm. guess I just leave it and keep, keep working and see if, yeah. But this is. This I mean, hasn't. This hasn't been merged yet, or is it merged? No, it got merged uh, today. I think. I saw, I got an email that it got merged. Okay, good stuff. Then we will just wait and see what happens. And if there's any updates that needs to be done, we can just just make them. That's interesting. Great job, Carl. Uh, you cracked that. Yeah. That's awesome. And, and s somehow when I run it locally, it, it fails. So I don't know. What's... Well, you can't really run it locally. Or do you mean running Cypress CI or what do you mean? Yeah. Did That's interesting. That I had the problem the yesterday. Year? Yesterday, all the tests were failing for me after I did a git fetch and the npm install. And today, I did a git fetch and npm install, and I spoke with Tassilo and Mike, and today it was working for me again. Right. Yeah. Did you reboot so your morning, computer in, the, in, the, in between? or? Well, I rebooted my computer in between. Yeah. So, Mike, this morning when I asked you to run it, was it passing or or, or not? No, it was like on 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 the PR it was running, so that's why I even merged uh, because it looked good. Um, but oh, but uh, you were talking about locally. On my local, I haven't been able to have it run. But yeah, but you, I, you never, do you have you the map the to... map box token, Mikey? Yes, yes, yes. I have all the tokens. Okay. Yeah, I have the token and the database URL. 
yeah gotcha gotcha yeah i'll uh, well probably something with my setup i'll figure it out all right okay back to to my questions daniel did you I learn anything think today I'm Are you with us, Daniel? There you go. Yes, uh, Daniel. Uh, Daniel here. Yeah. yeah. Did you learn uh, anything? So much I learned. So much I learned uh, about uh, React, uh, and I think uh, in a couple of uh, days I will actually be able to to walk um, with speed on the issue I've got with uh, that Tassilo. The issue Tassilo did. Uh, assigned to me because I discover more, more so many part of in part the, the part of the code I could able to read they were both, they were all class components so changing them to 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 functionize is a, is a main task for me mm -hmm. uh, the the code doesn't appear as uh, simple as the demos we do in class here so Oh, I did talk to Mike, and Mike uh, did agree over the weekend he will be helping out just to understand how the code uh, relates, and then so I know where and where to work. So very useful class here, very very useful. Thank you, Thomas. Awesome, awesome, great. Thank you very much for those words, uh, Daniel. Uh, Carmen had to uh, drop out, uh, but she's writing that uh, it was a good session. Thank you very much for that. Uh, and I think that I think I asked everyone now. I didn't leave out anyone, did I? No, I did not. Good. Um, uh, I think that will cover that. Do it for us today. Uh, next time we will be doing uh, React Router Dome and uh, also test a little bit because we, you know, in those demos when you do this kind of hacking. It's so easy to forget about the the testing. So so I would, uh, um, you know, I, I need to. We we need to get into that that discipline to, of testing, and I also have a new new demo uh, for those of you who are interested in in learning to both unit test and accept write acceptance tests in a specific way. Uh, the week after this week, we will be doing a small challenge where we will be not focusing that much on on technology like uh you know react or advanced react concepts like redux or anything but write a, a very simple html based html javascript vanilla javascript application but we will practice uh, a specific flow of writing acceptance tests first and then jumping back down to unit tests and and uh, and working our way through that that uh, um, that jungle, uh, I was writing a bit of documentation about that earlier today, and uh, next week we we can we can run this through run through this, and hopefully you will see the benefit of uh, um, of a specific flow or having a a specific flow of of uh, how to write tests and implementation code combined. Uh, I look forward to that, of course, and uh, yeah, that's uh, that's about it. We are covering a lot of ground, people, um, and I'm very glad that you guys are working on that that project. And if there's anything, I am always available uh, on Slack. I might not always answer uh, fast because I have a lot of things going on, but and I will not always answer what you hope me to answer. Uh, but but uh, you fire away with your questions should you have any all right that's it for me thank you very much guys awesome thank you so much thank you for your participation people stay cool thank you too much you too <laughs> bye all right cheers twitch and youtube thank you very much uh all these um all these recordings are available on agileventures.org remember that and under projects uh, you can navigate to this um, uh, to this project it's called work the web summer school and quite a lot of them we have 25 videos not everyone is is made available yet uh, i will update that 
but today's today's recording will be uh, will be uploaded to this site uh, within an hour or so and so you can catch this one and the previous ones we've been at it for um, quite a few weeks now uh, yeah I see you Thursday if not before sayonara folks